Greetings to all, this is Chance of North Wales. This is the unboxing and background video for the Yak 25 uh, RV NATO code name uh, Mandrake. A reconnaissance derivative of the Yak 25, the Yak 25 RV higher stands for high altitude reconnaissance was developed in 1959 nato code name mandrake it had a completely new long span straight wing of 23.4 meters more than twice of the uh, yak 25m interceptor with a total area of 55 square meters the camera and sensor packs were added in the fuselage some versions may have retained one cannon. Despite its low wing loading, the Mandrake's altitude performance was marginal at best, with considerable engine uh, problems at high altitudes, excessive vibration, and primitive equipment that imposed high workloads for the crew pilot. The Soviet Air Force nevertheless kept the Yak-25 RV in, in service until 1974. A few were used into the late 1970s for the monitoring of, rate, of radioactive contamination with specialist sensors. These were designated Yak-25 RRV. Efforts in 1971 to develop the, Mac, the Mandrake as a high-altitude interceptor Yak-25PA proved unsuccessful. In 1961, a series of lightened mandrakes were produced as high-altitude target drones. The Yak-25 RVI was used as an unmanned target um, for unarmed no life fire interception practice. The Yak-25 um, RV-2 has... Um, was a remote piloted drone. This source for this was Wikipedia. So now into the unboxing part. This is the unboxing for the Yak 25 NATO code name Mandrake 172nd scale by A model. Now I picked this uh, kit up um, a little while ago now from Chester Model Center for £22. Fairly typical price for what you get for this. Now this is very much traditional A model kit. So let's we'll set this aside. We'll start off by having a quick look at the instructions. So as always with A model you get parts call out sprue map and then fairly clear instructions I must admit I think they've gotten better over time as you can see A model kits tend to be really break things down into quite uh, detailed uh, sub assemblies with a lot of elements to them I think it keeps them all simple again they've reused a lot of elements as well seat is basic um, but once it's tucked down in there it's um, fairly hard to tell anyway i won't be replacing this with a resin one i'll make do with what i've got add seat belts and look at if there's a need for side consoles you know on the fuselage sides but they've got them there as well so mm, not sure on that but again forward wheel well aft wheel well coming together in the fuselage halves uh because it sits there on that not going to need a huge amount of nose weight but it will need some that's for sure it's just to stop it tipping back engines i found on previous yaks these have needed quite a lot of filling and work and you really got to take your time off looking at the fit, on the fit of these nice uh, <laughs> nice look to this jet with a uh, I, lo I do like the overall combination of the straight wings, the swept tail, the prodded engines. It's an elegant looking aircraft. Uh, the recon pods. And coming together with that yak style of undercarriage, nose gear, bicycle gear and outriggers. Quite U2-ish. Uh, I think it came in a little bit before the U2. I'm not sure, but I think it did. Um, but certainly didn't have the performance, so I believe. Certainly not able to get up to that sort of altitude. But still a high altitude bird. Uh, markings, well there aren't many marking options for this. 
you got the main stencils. Really, you're talking about one color scheme uh, build on with that uh, Russian painted silver. So that's the instructions. Let's take a look at the kit itself. A model. <laughs> Everything comes in one bag. We'll start off with the as screws as they come out. Fuse the large sides. No interior de no inner uh, wall detail. Nice clean crisp mouldings. Recess panel lines, plastic quite soft. Can't see any particular flash on this. This is nice, crisp, and clean. The wings, it's reverse images of the two halves. Again, a lot what you tend to find with a model a lot of sprue attachment points to enable the plastic flow. Very, quite plain in appearance. Nothing there unsurprising. Again, no flash. Neat, crisp molding. You can't. You can drop the flaps, or you can drop. Yeah, you can drop the flaps on this if you want to. What I would say on doing anything like that is do your research. See if the aircraft in the static condition in operational use has the flaps dropped or not. In many cases, they don't. So the other smaller sprues, wheel wells and cockpit. Key feature about A model is because they do so many sub variants, they uh, they do keep common sprues together. So they tend to be quite small, but really not, nothing to worry about with these. Okay, maybe the detail isn't as good as Tamigawa and that lot, but still perfectly adequate for what it is and I can't really see much flash to worry about you do have to take a bit of extra care when cleaning up parts because you can see how the sprue gates do overlap uh, the components a bit more so you have they do need um, more cleaning up than you might do with other kits particularly when cutting them from the sprues because of that um, overlapping but that's that's what our files are for engines as I said, I found previously that the fit on these can be a real challenge. So you do have to take your time here. A lot of pre-fitting, sanding, filling is necessary. Uh, and, I, you know, they do end up being something of a filler queen. But again, take your time. Um, paint the interior areas of the intakes. You get a reasonable build out of this. Well, I can't see this presenting any major issues. Horizontal stabiliser. Oh, there's the cockpit parts. Now the uh, instrument panel will work well with a bit of dry brushing. Seat is basic, as can be said. Two pieces. They can be a little bit fiddly, I find. Uh, we have the back and the base separate like that. And no really clear, distinct attachment. The wingtip pods. Not wingtip pods, but the wing recon pods. And finally, the clear. One clear sprue. Mm. Now, canopy is quite thick. Canopy lines are fairly distinct, so it shouldn't be too much of a nightmare to mask, but this can be a problem sometimes with a model that the canopy line definition is just indistinct and you end up having trying to work out where what goes where. It's not the worst I've seen by any stretch of the imagination, but you do have a bit of a thick canopy here. Sometimes I think the canopy can be a model's weakest point, but this is adequate. I'll have to bag this up separately though so it doesn't get scratched up. And now the decal sheet. Eek. Now, 
I have a love hate relationship with um, the decals. I think for the most part they are pretty good. What I don't like are these tiny bloody sheets, especially these done as long strips. And sometimes cutting out the stencils and the other decals, they're just too closely packed together. Now, notice about saving money and everything else. Um, sometimes the decals are brilliant, but it's the way they're pre printed and presented I think can give issues, and certainly does give me issues from time to time. Not that it's, it's insurmountable, just a bit too crowded, but I suppose that's a personal perspective. Interesting that they've done that. Now that's going to either work really well or be an absolute pain in the backside. The anti-glare panel as a decal. Sometimes I really like them. Sometimes they give me an absolute blooming nightmare. So, two sets of yellow bought numbers. So you're really restricted to two different aircraft. Probably from the same unit. Well, that's a decal. Now, I'll pop everything back. Very much typical A model kit. And the quality is perfectly adequate for what you want to build. Um, will it go together on rails? Is it going to be a shake and bake? Not a snowball's chance in hell. But will it, at the end of the day, give you something that looks like a Yak 25 RV, NATO codename Mandrake? The answer is quite emphatically yes. And that's why you build them. Because you love, got to love the subject matter. I'm going to look forward to putting this together. Research um, is absolutely essential. Definitely, if you are putting together your project folder, use something, use the Russian search engine Yandex and put in your search terms into Russian, use their translate function. So I'm going to be doing, building up a project file, looking for uh, Yak25, like cockpit photos, with my search in Russian. And that's a good way of just finding those files that you may not find with a normal Google search. Um, I'm looking forward to this. It'll be not the smallest of aircraft in 172nd, not by any stretch of the imagination, but there's a real elegance to this, and that's why I'm looking forward to building it. Clean lines, nice looking aircraft, and uh, so that's unboxing of the A model Yak 25 RV. This model ref 72 one seven six and this i believe is also available online from places like hannans so guys thank you for watching